This is not. I can't. This doesn't have the ad featured in it. I don't, oh, it athletes, does. We play a football game, which, you know, times like this, you stop and think about just how, not only how good we have it, but what freedoms were allowed. A day after 9-11, Pat Tillman knew he could do more. He gave up his NFL career to join the U.S. Army Rangers and ultimately lost his life in the line of duty. Like, Pat Tillman is a very interesting character. The first part of it is true. He did literally leave his NFL career after 9-11 to go join the Rangers. That part is true. But in that process, in that experience, like millions of fucking veterans, okay, uh, millions uh, or at least hundreds of thousands of active duty combat members, especially after fucking 9-11, he started becoming disillusioned with the purpose of the war. He started he started getting angry. He was uh, having uh, letter correspondences with, you know, friend of the show, everyone's favorite, uh, everyone's favorite libertarian, Noam Chomsky, okay? And... And basically, in that process, uh, he, he started being openly critical about, uh, he started becoming openly critical about the war. He was uh, very critical about Iraq, the Iraq invasion. And he even was uh, relatively critical about even Afghanistan as well, which at the time was like unique. Now, he did not die in the line of duty. He was murdered. He was killed friendly fire style. Okay? Um, so, yeah, he got fragged by, uh, by his, his, you know, fellow rangers. Let's watch Today, the rest of this ad, then, and I'll give you guys the real story. Principles live on in an organization that bears his name and its scholarship recipients who embody his spirit. Like Tillman, Dave Prakash felt compelled to serve after 9-11. When I was 29, I was a doctor, but I felt I needed to do more. So I put my medical career aside and joined the Air Force. After his career as an operational test pilot, Dave now develops artificial intelligence-based technologies to serve patients. Professional care helped Fabergé Flint overcome the trauma of losing her husband in combat. I started the Staff Sergeant Brian A. Lewis Award. It provides financial support to students in pursuit of higher education. At Athens Technical College, Fabergé guides the educational pursuits of the underrepresented, a passion she shares with reservist Heijung Park. I earned my citizenship through the Army, and now I study economic and environmental impacts on health and well-being. I mean, this is like NFL propaganda. This is, you know, American imperialism propaganda. And it's the grossest one, especially because Pat Tillman was murdered, uh, perhaps for the crime of being outspoken about uh, the U.S. military and its actions, while also simultaneously um, the, the or in the immediate aftermath of his execution, okay, of his assassination, uh, I believe he was shot in the head uh, with an M16. So the idea that like three times, the idea that it was a friendly fire incident that was a really horrific accident is a ridiculous one, okay? Um, the American government covered this up. And by the way, Pat Tillman's family absolutely despises this kind of display. They openly talk about this uh, being gross and disgusting. And the fact that they use his uh, likeness, the fact that they use his experiences to do this kind of like imperialist propaganda is something that the, the Tillman family openly fucking hates. Okay? Um, so just, just explaining that real quick here for you guys as well. Let me see. I think I have a... I ha I've, I've covered Pat Tillman regularly. Oh, here. Happy second Monday. Nike announced they're sponsoring Kaepernick and boy are people angry. Throwing this in the fire because of Colin Kaepernick is now the face of Nike. <laughs> I love this kid. Imagine how much effort it takes to hate this much. Parents, teach your kids the difference between right and wrong instead of grabbing the camera and filming your child being a dip. I love when the people who claim we're being snowflakes lose their minds collectively and start destroying their own property because of one ad, just one ad, just this thing. <laughs> 
Oh. <sighs> okay. It's got to be hard being a conservative when you have to get mad at inanimate objects all the time. Like, imagine if they channeled their frustration into a real systemic injustice. I mean, how much of a thin-skinned baby do you have to be that you're mad that Nike sponsored someone protesting police brutality? Like, this is what makes you honk like a goose. <coughs> Not the fact that extrajudicial police killings are so routine that 9,000 citizens have been killed since 9-11 in the hands of the police, and that doesn't even deserve a protest. Or not the fact that the criminal justice system is completely broken broken and we hold a quarter of the world's incarcerated population. Fine by me, the people protesting this injustice. Now those, those are the people I hate. By the way, if you'd like to come debate me on this issue, I'm live on Twitch every day from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash Hasanabi. I'm way. Damn, look at that. Also, if you need any further evidence that all of this performative outrage by conservatives has nothing to do with the military, look no further than Pat Tillman. Nice white boy who quit the NFL to join the military, right? He's exactly the kind of patriot conservatives love to bring up because they've um, if I get killed, I don't want Bush to parade me through the streets and use a political tool, Krakauer said. And of course, that's what Bush Never did. Never bothered to read a whole ass book on Tillman's patriotism where he quickly realized the Iraq war was patently illegal, was in contact with Noam Chomsky, but was executed by a fellow ranger. And then the Defense Department tried to cover up that murder. That's probably why Tillman's family still asks you dip to stop using his name. Alas, this is yet another reason why this protest has nothing to do with defending the big bad military's honor and everything to do with people of color having a voice. I'm gonna put this into incredibly simple terms for those on your timeline upset about this issue, okay? If you're mad at Kaepernick and other athletes for kneeling during the anthem and not upset about what they're protesting, then you're a part of the problem. If you still think it's disrespectful to kneel during the anthem, even though it was a Green Beret named Nate Boyer's suggestion to do so, then you're a part of the problem. If you're refusing to see certain realities, like the fact that hundreds of thousands of people of color are served in the military and that they are also disproportionately affected by police brutality or the fact that thousands of homeless veterans still get mistreated by the police then you are a part of the problem if you're actively celebrating a dude who lost his job for speaking his truth and then still managed to donate millions to underserved communities who deals with death threats every day after the president declared him a pariah then you're no free speech champion you're just a triggered bootlicking dip i mean I've covered this so many times. I'm sure people are annoyed at this point, but like, what do you want Kaepernick to do? You want him to just crawl into a hole and die for speaking his truth about something that impacts us all, like all Americans? And look, I'm not gonna sit here and act like Nike's simply doing this out of the goodness of their heart either. They made a deliberate choice. They knew that this would generate press and hopefully some sales for them. But in this case, they're on the right side of history. It's a multinational corporation with questionable labor practices hoping to profit off of supporting social justice. Absolutely. Is this still good because it allows others to speak truth to power as well? Yes. Am I enjoying MAGA people burning their Nikes instead of crosses at least? Absolutely. It's delightful. Eight out of 10. I'm Sam Piker. If you're enjoying. Why do you have 2007 driven this video? Dude, I literally own all of the same things and I wear them regularly. What the fuck do you mean? Yeah. Are you really not mentioning that a two that a two forty was a gun that killed him? Absolutely possible. It was friendly fire. The rate of fire is extremely high. I have shot one. Tillman's Ranger unit came under fire from a friendly LAR unit in a Bradley assault vehicle. They were pinned down by the Bradley's thirty millimeter V cannon, and in the chaos, one of the dudes shot him in the back of the head. That's so funny because you guys brought up two completely different uh, stories. Yeah. For a detailed account of how the military covered up the murder of Pat Tillman and then used his name to launder the genocidal war in Iraq, I highly recommend this piece by The Intercept. Some excerpts here. Tillman enlisted in... Uh, Tillman enlisted expecting to join the fight against Al-Qaeda and the effort to bring Osama bin Laden to justice. Instead, he was sent to Iraq. All available evidence indicates that Tillman loathed the Iraq war, a voracious reader... Uh, who consume many of the world's greatest religious texts, even though he considered himself an atheist, which is another thing that they rarely ever fucking mention, that Pat Tillman was like a bit of a outspoken atheist as well. Um, Tillman was a student of history and formed his own opinions. Shortly after arriving in the country, he confided in his brother and their friend Russell Bear that he thought the invasion and occupation were fucking illegal. He had loose plans to meet up with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology linguist and anti-war intellectual Noam Chomsky once he got out of the military. Tillman had, in fact, charged up 
a hill in an effort to defend the men he served with, including his brother. He was not, however, killed by the enemy. Within hours, the military knew Tillman was killed by his fellow soldiers, brought down by three bullets to the head, let loose during, uh, I guess, what? Spasms of wildly irresponsible but deliberate shooting. I'm Pat fucking Tillman, he had screamed, in a failed effort to stop the incoming fire. Gary Smith, in his account for Sports Illustrated, noted that for the men on the ground, the gravity of what happened sunk in quickly. America's most renowned soldier was dead, and they had killed him. The military's initial investigation, filed days after the incident, which described acts of gross negligence, called for the Army Criminal Investigation Command to determine whether the shots uh, were fired with criminal intent was buried. The initial investigation was buried. In an echo of the Lynch episode, the Bush administration and the U.S. military shamelessly ran with the fabricated account of Tillman's death. In the hours after Tillman was killed, his uniform and personal effects were destroyed, meaning key forensic evidence of what many men in his platoon knew was a case of, uh, what is it? How do you, what? Uh, patricide? No. What? Fratricide was lost. Not patricide, fratricide. Tillman's fellow soldiers were told to keep quiet, including in their conversations with his brother, Kevin, who was on a mission, but at a different location when the fatal shots were fired. Right away, the military lied to Tillman's parents, initially telling the family that an enemy combatant killed their son as he stepped out of a vehicle. The military kept the truth from coming, uh, the truth from them through Tillman's memorial service, allowing the SEAL who cared for Tillman and his brother to unknowingly describe the, to the entire country a sequence of events with even more embellishment. The crucial part of the piece concerns the bullets in Pat Tillman's forehead fired from close range, which the military lied about and was only revealed much later after Tillman's mom forced the issue and didn't accept the government's lies. This is how depraved they are. Four weeks after the memorial service, I was I was in the CBs from uh, 2011 to 2016, and we used to say, don't pull a Tillman if people started complaining about deployment. I never got it until a friend told me he was literally killed because of him saying we shouldn't be here. Four weeks after the memorial service, Kevin Tillman's sergeant pulled him aside at their stateside base and told him his brother had been killed by friendly fire. Their mother, Mary... Uh, got the news from a reporter calling her for comment. The military withheld key facts from the Tillman family, even as it admitted the broad strokes of his death. It would take four years of digging, led chiefly by Mary, seven official investigations, and two congressional hearings before some semblance of the truth surrounding Tillman's death was pried from the government. Jesus Christ. <sighs> More than 2,000 pages of testimony released to the Associated Press in 2007 revealed that army attorneys sent each other congratulatory emails for keeping criminal investigators at bay and that the close proximity of the bullet holes in Tillman's forehead had raised serious questions from medical examiners as to the army's version of events. An alternative narrative had to be constructed Kevin Tillman told lawyers in a hearing that year, the same hearing where Jessica Lynch described how the government twisted her experience for its own benefit. After the truth of Pat's death was partially revealed, Tillman's brother said before the House Committee, Pat was no longer of use as a sales asset and had become strictly the Army's problem. Yeah, important to note that Pat Tillman, important to note that Pat Tillman got in touch with Chomsky to arrange a meeting before he was deployed to Afghanistan and his views were likely known by military officials. I'll leave it up to you to decide why he ended up shot in the forehead at close range by friendly fire. Now, there could be, there are multiple accounts of this. There are multiple accounts of this. 
some of which point to it being accidental, some of which point to it being deliberate, okay? Now, one thing I will mention is that even in the most charitable circumstance, the government hiding the truth about his death, lying to uh, Pat Tillman's family, okay? Lying to Pat Tillman's family is absolutely unacceptable, okay? They burned his fucking diary and his clothes, which is ridiculous, which uh, basically destroys any fucking semblance of, of charitability that you could have in, in this matter, okay? They literally burned... He was, he was uh, constantly journaling. He was constantly writing about his thoughts. They burned it, and they burned his clothes, okay? This is evidence that they immediately, uh, immediately engaged a cover-up. But as far as, the, the, as far as the charitability goes, the reason why they engaged in this cover-up is a, an indecent reason, okay? So even in the most charitable interpretation of events, let's say he got uh, friendly fired on accident, okay? They literally actively work to cover up that reality so that they could continue using him as a recruitment tool because he was this hero and uh, leaving the NFL, this like fucking chiseled, you know, uh, square jawed man who left the NFL to go into the fucking military, who got deployed into Afghanistan. Like they, they wanted to use him and they still use him. The fact that his family has asked and, and scream the fucking mountaintops about not using him for military recruitment propaganda. The fact that his brother was also in the military and like openly has disdain for the U.S. military and the Department of Defense, and they still use him is insane, okay? They wanted to keep using him as an asset even after his death because, you know, when you sign up for the DOD, you're giving your fucking body and your soul to the American war machine, okay? And if you're famous enough... They will literally fucking use you even after you die. Okay? It's insanely fucked up. And they wanted to either use it. They wanted to either use his, uh, you know, they, they thought it was a win-win most likely. That like showing this as like a, showing this as like friendly fire was going to tarnish his legacy. Okay? It would make his family feel better. Uh, and also, they could consistently continue using his image for recruitment. Now, those are the reasons why. Those are the reasons why uh, uh, the, the American government decided to fucking... Uh, decided to, to not uh, reveal the truth. This is why it was against Iraq and killed. On this day in 1991, the U.S. bombed the Amiria... Amiria civilian air raid shelter in Iraq, which was sheltering a thousand sleeping civilians, killing 408 Iraqi civilians, 261 women, and 52 children. At 4 a.m. on February 13th, two U.S. F-117s dropped two laser-guided smart bombs on the shelter. The first pierced the fortified concrete wall of the shelter, jamming its thick steel doors and trapping everyone inside. The second bomb followed through the first hole and exploded deep inside the shelter. The youngest victim was seven days old. Most of the victims were killed by the heat of the explosion. The bodies were taken out by rescue workers later were charred, unrecognizable, and some were still smoldering. The smell of burned flesh stayed in the neighborhood for days. A BBC journalist reported that I saw one man incoherent with grief fall to the ground and bury his face in the earth. 11 members of his family had been in the shelter. Omar Adnan, 17 at the time, told the reporters that his three sisters, his mother, this was in 1991, chat, and his father had all been killed. I was sleeping and suddenly I felt heat and the blanket was burning. I turned to try and touch my mother who was next to me, but grabbed nothing but a piece of flesh. The bombing was, at the time, the single most lethal incident for civilians in modern air warfare. Human Rights Watch and the Geneva International Center for Justice have both labeled the incident a war crime. But we can't prosecute war crimes against the United States, even though they are the ones who generate the most metric ton of fucking war crimes. The Pentagon lied, saying al Amiria shelter was a military command center, but foreign journalists who visited the site right after the bombing found no indication whatsoever that the place was anything but a civilian shelter. Human Rights Watch reported in 1991, it is now well established through interviews with neighborhood residents that the Amiria structure was plainly marked as public shelter and was used throughout the air war by a large number of civilians. Seven Iraqi families who lost loved ones in the attack launched a lawsuit in Belgium against George H.W. Bush, Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney, Joint Chief of Staff Colin Powell, General Norman Schwarzkopf for the bombing in 2003, calling it a war crime, but the case was dismissed. 
Notice how the players didn't change with the exception of George H.W. Bush. Like literally the same players, 1991, same players. In 2003, a lawsuit is, is uh, you know, they try to do a lawsuit uh, a decade later, a decade and, and change later, pretty much against the same fucking players involved. Now their country is still a, a wreck, you know? Anyway. Uh, Pat Tillman was corresponding with you and planned a meeting before he was killed by a friendly FAR in Afghanistan. And what was he needing to discuss? Uh, it's, um, it's in essence true, but the, the specific facts are that Shortly before he went to Afghanistan, I was contacted by, uh, he, he couldn't do it, but I was contacted by his friends and family, uh, and we did arrange to meet uh, when he came back. And I don't want to say what was on his mind, of course, but right. it was pretty clear from the discussion that he wanted to discuss the, uh, the question of the justice of the uh, 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 the, the U.S. war in uh, Afghanistan and other regional issues. Pat. Yeah, but hey, guys, I know that there's like a lot of evidence here, but guess what? This guy said his friend shot Pat Tillman, and he said it was uh, no big deal. He said, my bad. Jack Murphy says, just to be clear, this is false. I know the guy who shot Pat, and it was a tragic and accidental friendly fire incident. The military initially lied about how it went down. And that is the real issue here. When you question the version of events the government provides to the media, that's ideology, which is bad. To be clear, the things I'm saying aren't ideological at all, though. Some people interpret the news through an ideological lens, and stories become facts or lies solely based on how they align with a pre-existing worldview. Yeah. You know what it is, you know? I know the guy who shot Bin Laden and he definitely didn't actually kill him. It's all true. Okay, but that one might actually legitimately be true. The guy who shot Bin Laden didn't actually shoot Bin Laden. Ohio in here. When you get to Ohio later, please make note specifically of the release of chlorine, hydrochloric acid, carcinogens, etc. into the air, water, and the official report that no contaminants contaminants had been detected and there's currently zero health risk even though it seems like every animal in the neck in the 10 mile zone has dropped dead yeah no it's just dude you don't understand you don't understand that's just normal stuff animals just always mysteriously happen to die guys guys everything is fine please don't say things are bad in ohio everything is fine animals happen to die all the time in like this mass uh animal death incident Okay, that's just normal stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the vaccine injury, I think. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's the that's the Pat Tillman story. Wanted to get to that real quick. Wanted to also cover how fucking gross it is that like, you know, they still. Um. Just wanted to cover how gross it is that they still fucking talk about this. Here's Richard speaking out about his brother, by the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this real quick. And you will see him again when a loving God reunites us all with the loved ones who preceded us in death. He shit on John McCain big time, too. The contrast to the memorial service should have hit a warning shot to the military. You got people out there sort of speaking in these glittering generalities. Pat, your family doesn't have to worry anymore. 
You are home, you are safe, and you will not be forgotten. And then you've got a brother coming up there, somebody who's willing to speak the brutality of that reality for them. He was always given gifts. Thanks, Pat. Uh, I didn't write shit, because uh, I'm not a writer. And um, I just want to say it was, there's a lot of people here, thanks. Um, it was really amazing to be his uh, little baby brother. Uh, yeah, I'm not just gonna sit up here and break down on you, but uh, thank you for coming, Pat's a fucking champion. And uh, always will be. Uh, just make no mistake, he'd want me to say this. He's not with God, he's fucking dead. He's not religious, so thanks for your thoughts, but he's fucking dead. Um, I, I don't regret any of that. I, you know, as far as what I was thinking, I, I was just simply miserable. You know, I was, you know, I was, I was sad for my, my whole family. I was sad for my mom, my dad, Marie, Kevin. This isn't a production. It's my brother's service. I didn't plan on saying that. It just, uh, he's not what these people wished he was. Everyone grabbed at Pat's death. Not necessarily just the military. Everybody grabbed at him. They just chose the wrong family to try to do it in front of. Yeah. It is really, really, I mean, I don't know. It's just really fucked up, dude. Every part of this is fucked up. You're right, you're right. I want to thank Chairman Waxman for holding this hearing and members of the committee for attending. My name is Ken Tillman. Two days ago marked the third anniversary of the death of my older brother, Pat Tillman, Spear Afghanistan. To our family and friends, it was a devastating loss. To the nation, it was a moment of disorientation. To the military, it was a nightmare. But to others within the government, it appears to have been an opportunity. April of 2004 was, a, was turning into the deadliest month to date in the war in Iraq. The dual rebellions in the Jeff and Fallujah handed the U.S. forces their first tactical defeat as American commanders essentially surrendered Fallujah to members of Iraq resistance and the administration was forced to accede to Ayatollah Sassani's demand for January elections in, a, in, a, in exchange for assistance in extricating U.S. forces from its battle with the Mahdi militia. A call-up of 20,000 additional troops was ordered, and another 20,000 troops had their tours of duty extended. In the midst of this, the White House learned that Christian Parente, Seymour Hersh, and other journalists we're about to reveal a shocking scandal involving massive and, and systemic detainee abuse in a facility known as Abu Ghraib. Yep. Then on April 22nd, 2004, my brother Pat was... Every part of the fucking war was going wrong. Every part of the war was going terribly wrong. And then they lost, like, this heroic figure that they were actively using for recruitment in the worst way possible. Killed in a firefight in eastern Afghanistan. Immediately after Pat's death, our family was told that he was shot in the head by the enemy in a fierce firefight outside the narrow canyon. In the days leading up to Pat's memorial service, media accounts based on information provided by the Army and, and the White House were wreathed in a patriotic glow and became more dramatic in tone. A terrible tragedy that might have further undermined support for the war in Iraq was transformed into an inspirational message that served instead to support the nation's foreign policy wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. To further exceed Pat's death, he was awarded the Silver Star for Valor. The abridged version went like this. Only after his team engaged this well-armed enemy did it appear that the enemy's volume of fire into Corporal into the kill zone diminished. Above the din of battle, Corporal Tillman was heard issuing fire commands to take the, to the fight to an enemy 
on the dominating high ground. Always leading from the front, Corporal Tillman aggressively maneuvered his team against the enemy position on the steep slope. As a result of Corporal Tillman's effort and heroic action, the trail element of the platoon was able to maneuver through the ambush position of relative safety without suffering a single casualty. All of this is a lie, by the way. Fuck, I never knew all these details. No, 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 no. He is going to reveal that every single part of this report that the Department of Defense wrote was just a lie. They wrote this specifically to cover their own asses. They made it up so that it didn't look like Pat Tillman was murdered. They wrote fucking fan fiction, basically. Bro, the images of Abu Ghraib on Wikipedia are insane. Yeah, don't fucking, I mean, if you want, if you're in for a ride, a lot of Zoomers probably don't even fucking know that. Like, a lot of Zoomers weren't really, hadn't really developed consciousness at the time of, like, the Abu Ghraib uh, shit happening, uh, you know, mass torture happening in American... Uh, in American facilities, which, by the way, they still do, for the record. This was just, like, torture for the sake of torture. They still tortured. They also tortured on the books. They called it enhanced air interrogation. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it, it's a wild journey to go down to see it happening. I didn't know about it until you mentioned it, like, last year. Jesus Christ, dude. This is why I tell you the top of the hour ad break is at the top of every hour because people just, like, fucking don't even realize it. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Yeah, you know? Because Zoomers, they just, they forget. They have goldfish memories. You know? Now... You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Um, if you're lucky, you can also avoid the ads at the top of the hour by getting gifted a sub. Here is the three-minute ad break now. In the eternal words of President Barack Obama, he said, we uh, torture some folks. We uh, torture some folks. He also said, we must not look uh, backwards. We must look forwards. Uh. And the fight that ensued at Corporal Tillman's position increased in intensity. Corporal Tillman focused all his efforts on keeping the men of his team safe while c continuing to press the attack himself without regard for, for his own personal safety. In the face of mortal danger, Corporal Tillman illustrated that he would not fail his comrades. His actions are in keeping with the highest standards of the United States Army. This was a narrative that inspired countless Americans, as intended. There was one small problem with the narrative, however. It was utter fiction. The content of the multiple investigations reveal a series of contradictions that strongly suggest deliberate and careful misrepresentations. We appeal to this committee because we believe this narrative was intended to deceive the family, but more importantly, to deceive the American public. Pat's death was clearly the result of fratricide. It was due to a series of careless actions by several individuals in our own place after a small harassing ambush. During this uncontrolled shooting, the driver of the vehicle himself recognized friendlies immediately, but kept driving for approximately 400 meters while the soldiers in the back of his truck continued to shoot at the hillside where the U.S. soldiers were and civilians. The vehicle saw arms and hands waving, smoke was flying, pin gun flares. An Afghan soldier was re immediately recognized. They never felt threatened, and they still shut up the village unprovoked. And the vehicle behind them clearly saw the U.S. soldiers on the hillside and were calling ceasefire. The end results were the death of Pat and the Afghan soldier, as well as two more soldiers wounded in the village. The signs were available, but the decision to shoot was made. This was not some fog of war. They simply lost control. According to the sworn statements, statement on April 26th by the fellow soldier who was right... Apparently, this is not real either, right? This isn't even correct.
like even this information is not correct. This is when he gave st- uh, when he when he testified to Congress about what he thought was correct. That he got uh, he got shot like uh, I think like the the actually uh, correct thing that happened is that he got shot from uh, he got shot from uh, like ten feet away, like pretty close. Or 10 yards away? Is it 10? I thought it was like, I thought it was 10 feet away. Uh, With a M16. Right next to Pat, literally right next to Pat. Next to Pat's statement on April 26th by the fellow soldier who was right next to Pat, literally right next to Pat. Thanks, sir. Quote, I remember watching the friendlies just shooting at us. A 50 cal rolled up into our sights and started to unload on top of us. They would work in bursts. 50 cal for 10 to 15 seconds, 240 Bravo, 10 to 15 seconds, back and forth. Specialist Tillman and I were yelling, cease, stop, stop, friendlies, friendlies, cease fire. But they could not hear us. Tillman came up with the idea to let a smoke grenade go. They stopped, this stopped the friendly contact for a few moments, and that's when I realized the AMF soldier was dead. At this time, the GMV rolled into a better position to fire on us. We thought the battle was over, though, so we were relieved, getting up, stretching out, and talking with one another. When I heard some 5-5 five, five stones coming from the GMV, they started firing again. That's when I hit the deck. Specialist Tillman, at this time, was hit by small arms fire. I know this because I, could... I know this because I could hear the pain in his voice as he called out, cease fire, friendlies, I am Pat effing Tillman, damn it. He said this over and over again until he stopped, end quote. The facts of this case clearly show Pat and the Afghan soldier were killed by fellow members of his platoon as well as the wounded soldiers on the hillside, and they knew this immediately. Revealing that Pat's death was a fratricide would have been yet another... This is the official autopsy report, the immediate autopsy that came after uh, where the U.S. Army medical examiners were suspicious about the close proximity of the three bullet holes in Pat Tillman's forehead and tried without success to get authorities to investigate whether the former professional football player's death amounted to a crime, according to the docu- uh, documents obtained by the Associated Press. The medical evidence did not match up with the scenarios as described. A doctor who examined Tillman's body after he was killed on the battlefield in Afghanistan in 2004 told investigators. The doctors whose name were blacked out said the bullet holes were so close together that it appeared the Army Ranger was cut down by an M16 fired from a mere 10 yards or so away. Three in the fucking forehead. Tight grouping. You know? I get it, it's burst fire, but, you know, it's a little bit, it's it's just, you know, very deliberate. I don't think you can do I don't think you can do a fucking uh, three-round burst like that from a distance and hit a target as small as a forehead. 
All three rounds of a burst hitting someone right in the forehead is pretty damn impossible unless it's aimed. Yeah, it's just like, especially if it's from a distance. Anyway, I like that. I like that the army doctors are like, this is insanely suspicious and uh, 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 amounts to a criminal investigation being launched. And then there's still motherfuckers in the chat who are like, uh, no, sorry, you're wrong. Actually, army doctors, even if it's not a burst, which I don't even know if it was a burst or not. The Pentagon and the administration of George W. Uh, Bush have been criticized in recent months for lying about the circumstances of Tillman's death. The military initially told the public and the Tillman family that he'd been killed by enemy fire. And the Department of Defense, uh, ultimately, they did conduct a criminal investigation, asked Tillman's comrades whether he was disliked by his men and whether they had any reason to believe he was deliberately killed. <laughs> you know, they, they sent in. After covering the story up, uh, you know they uh, and and burning his uh, uh burning his his uh personal belongings which very weird very fucking weird they were like hey so what's up did you guys not like him hey could you have like possibly murdered this very famous person In his last words, moments before he was killed, Tillman snapped at a panicky comrade under the fire to shut up and stop sniveling. Army attorneys sent each other congratulatory emails for keeping criminal investigators at bay as the Army conducted an internal friendly fire investigation that resulted in administrative or non-criminal punishments. The three-star general who kept the truth about Tillman's death from his family and the public told investigators some 70 times that he had a bad memory and could not recall the details of his actions. No evidence at all of enemy fire was found at the scene. No one was hit by enemy fire, nor was any government or equipment struck. This is, uh, there was more on the Associated Press report. This is just a CBS News uh, article covering the AP report, uh, the, the report that was leaked to the Associated Press. So even his brother, when he's doing uh, this testimony to Congress, is like not aware of, of everything that happened. Their political disaster during a month already swollen with political disaster. This is when they, this is when they realized that it was fake and then there was a second, uh, there was a second retelling. Because, like, originally they say it's enemy fire. Then they say, oh, it's not enemy fire. It's, uh, it's friendly fire, but here are the events that took place. And then there is the last report that contradicts all of that. This is in between those two. Disasters and the brutal truth that the American public would undoubtedly find unacceptable so the facts needed to be suppressed an alternative narrative had to be constructed crucial evidence was destroyed including patch uniform equipment and notebook the autopsy was not done in according to regulation and the field hospital report was falsified an initial investigation completed with eight to ten days before testimony could be changed or manipulated and which hit disturbingly close to the mark disappeared into thin air and was conveniently replaced by another investigation with more palatable findings this freshly manufactured narrative was then distributed to the american public and we believe the strategy had the intended effect it shifted the focus from the grotesque torture at abu Ghraib and a downward spiral of an illegal act of aggression to a great American who died a hero's death. Over a month after past death, when it became clear that it would no longer be possible to pull off the set, a few of the facts were pulled out to the public and to our... General Kensinger was ordered to tell the American public... I mean, it's just fucking insane that, like, they still... In spite of all of this, like, the NFL... And the the uh, the military from time to time use his likeness and imagery because so much time has passed. You know what I mean? So much time has passed that like we can whitewash it. 
But what do you expect from these pieces of shit? They do it to MLK. They do it to everyone. Okay? Public May 29th, five weeks later, that Pat died of, of fratricide, but with a calculated and nefarious twist. He stated, quote, there was, there was no one specific finding of fault, end quote, and that he, quote, probably died of fratricide, end quote, but there was specific fault, and there was nothing probable about the facts that led to Pat's death. The most despicable part of what General Kensinger told the American public so when he said, quote, the results of this investigation in no way diminish the bravery and sacrifice displayed by Corporal Tillman, end quote. This is an egregious attempt to manipulate the public into thinking that anyone who would question this 180 degree flip in the narrative would be casting doubt on Pat's bravery and sacrifice. Such questioning says nothing about Pat's bravery and sacrifice any more than the narrative for Jessica diminishes her bravery and sacrifice. It does, however, say a lot about the powers who perpetrated this. After the truth of Pat's death was par partially revealed, Pat was no longer of use as a sales asset and became strictly the Army's problem. They were now left with the task of briefing our family and answering our questions. With any luck, our family would sink quietly into our grief in the whole unsavory episode and the whole unsavory episode would be swept under the rug. However, they miscalculated our family's reaction. Through the amazing strength and perseverance of my mother, the most amazing woman on earth, our family has managed to have multiple investigations conducted. However, while each investigation gathered more information, the mountain of evidence was never used to arrive at an honest or even sensible conclusion. The most recent investigation by the Department of Defense Inspector General and the Criminal Investigative Division of the Army concluded that the killing of Pat was, quote, an accident. The handling of the situation after the firefight were described as a compilation of, quote, missteps, inaccuracies, and errors in judgment, which created the perception of concealment. The soldier who shot Pat... How fucking nasty that they literally... How nasty that they tie this back to, like, oh, you're diminishing his accomplishments if you actually ask for the truth about how he was murdered. How fucking disgusting, dude. ...admitted in his sworn statement that just before he delivered the fatal burst from about 35 meters away, that he saw his target waving hands, but he decided to pull the trigger anyway. Such an act is not an accident. It's a clear violation of the rules of engagement. Writing up a field hospital report stating that Pat was, quote, transferred to intensive care unit for continued CPR after most of his head had been taken off by multiple 5.56 five, rounds, is not misleading, stating that a giant rectangle bruise covering his chest that sits exactly where the armor plate that protects you from bullets is being, quote, consistent with paddle marks, is not misleading. These are deliberate and calculated lies. Writing a Silver Star Award before a single eyewitness account is taken is not a misstep. Falsifying soldier witness statements for a silver star is not a misstep. These are intentional falsehoods that meet the legal definition for fraud. Delivering false information at a nationally televised memorial service is not an error in judgment. Discarding an investigation that does not fit, fit a preordained conclusion is not an error in judgment. These are deliberate acts of deceit. This is not the perception of con this is concealment. Pat is, of course, not the only soldier where battlefield realities reach the family and the public in the form of a false narrative. First Lieutenant Ken Ballard died in Jeff, Iraq, just one day after Pat's fratricide went public. His mom, Karen Meredith, was told that Ken was killed by a sniper on a rooftop. Fifteen months later, she found out that he was killed by an unmanned gun from his own vehicle. First Lieutenant Kent, oh, excuse me. Private Jesse Booty was killed May 5th, 2004 in Iraq. His family was told he was killed in a vehicle accident. 
A year later, they received the autopsy report, and they found that he was shot in the back. The Army was forced to concede that he was accidentally shot by a Polish soldier. Just recently, out of nowhere, a lieutenant showed up at their family's house and told them that an officer in his own unit had shot him. They are still looking for answers. Sergeant Patrick McCafferty was killed June 22, 2004, from what the family was told as, quote, an ambush by insurgents. Two years later, they found out that those, quote, insurgents happened to be the same Iraqi troops that he was training. Before his death, he told his chain of command that these same troops that he was training were trying to kill him and his team. He was told to keep his mouth shut. About a year ago, I received a phone call. I was at my mom's house, and it was an emergency breakthrough from the operator. It happened to be a woman named Dawn Hellerman from North Carolina. So it was 2 o'clock in the morning, her time. Her husband, Staff Sergeant Brian Hellerman, was killed in Iraq. She was tired of get, receiving new official reasons why her husband had died. She was desperate for help, so she called. The system killed her. Those soldiers deserve better, and their families deserve better. Our family has relentlessly pursued the truth on this matter for three years. We have now concluded that our efforts are being actively thwarted by powers that are more important, excuse me, that are more interested in protecting a narrative than getting at the truth or seeing yep. that justice is served. That is why we ask Congress, as a sovereign representative of the whole people, to exercise its power to investigate the inconsistencies in Pat's death and the aftermath and into the, all the other soldiers that were betrayed by this system. The one bit of truth that did survive these manipulations was that Pat was and still is a great man. He is the most wonderful older brother to ever exist. Pat wanted to leave a positive legacy based on his actions, and he did that. But Pat's death at the hands of his comrades is a terrible tragedy. But the fact that the Army in what appears to be others attempted to hijack his virtue and his legacy is simply horrific. The least this country can do for him in return is to uncover who is responsible for his death, who lied and covered it up, and who instigated those lies and benefited from them, then ensure that justice is meted out to the culpable. Pat and these other soldiers volunteered to put their lives on the line for this country. Anything less than the truth is a betrayal of those values that all soldiers who have. It's just non existent. Universal values. You already know what the fucking universal values are. Anyway, um, we're going to move on from.